Hello. Is it GG you looking for? How's everyone doing? Stupid chat count's not working. I'm so sick of this. I'm so rusty. Oh, I'm refreshing the wrong thing. Oh my god, listen, I'm a mess. Let me tell you why. I can hear degenerates across the state of India going, uh huh, he totally is. <laughs> Losers. Anyway, uh, okay, so how's everyone doing? Am I on mute? No, I'm not. Thank you, Jesus. Can you guys hear pistachio? <laughs> Hopefully my soundboard's working. Great. Okay. Ooh, I got a Discord. Shit. God, I'm so behind. All right, so there's no countdown, and I don't have any countdowns. I need to redo the music. I have not started. I have, hadn't had a chance to do it. I was going to do it earlier today. Something came up. I may have to abruptly end the stream. I mean, I'll say goodbye. Hopefully not. I don't know yet. Um, but I got distracted with family shit. And I didn't, I didn't get to update the members list. So if you are a member, I'm sorry. I will update the list tomorrow. And on the next stream, you will be on the list. Um, and if you're not a member, it doesn't fucking apply to you anyway. And then hopefully by the next stream, I will have uh, countdowns uh, and uh, everything else going. So anyways, how's everyone doing today? Welcome. It is Tuesday, Mar Tuesday March 12th, 2024. And we are here in the beautiful state of Florida. It is already hot as balls here. Winter is winter has come and winter has left. I'm already sweating. I took a shower. I was doing stuff around the house. I needed a second shower. That's how disgusting things are here already. But it is what it is. The AC is back on again. It makes me sick. My uh, my um, electric bill is going to be a mess. But I pay it for myself. I don't have to grift off of other people to get it paid. Unlike some people. Looking at you, Samantha. Anyway... How's everyone doing? I am going to address Sunday's little snafu because I see a lot of busybodies trying to make a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of something out of a whole lot of nothing. And then I'm going to address Miss Samantha Jowls. Uh, apparently she went live earlier today. We're not going to watch it because if I wanted to watch trash, I would set up my beach chair in the driveway and I would literally stare at the uh, trash can for two hours. Like, why would I watch Sam when I could do that? And I'd probably have more entertainment doing that in the driveway because let's face it, a trash can has more personality than Sam Jowls at this point. But I digress. How's everyone doing today? Before we get into all of it, um, we are going to do the How the Fuck Did I Marry series. I have I know nothing about this story. Um, Belinda kind of just gave me a quick little rundown. She didn't say much, but she said there's a lot of parallels in this story to everyone's favorite degenerate couple <laughs> that we've been talking about. So I don't know what that means, but I'm super excited to see it. So we're going to watch that. We're going to do six parts tonight. The reason why I picked six parts is because... Um, I feel like when I looked at it yesterday, the six part, oh shit, how do I get rid of this? The six parts were about 50, oh, shut up, recent tease, I'm not ready for you, sorry, sorry. Because I was told that, uh, when I looked, this, the first six parts were about an hour, so I feel like an hour of content, oh boy, look who it is, hold on, I'm not ready for you yet, Russ, shit. I there got a is. bag of weed and a bottle of wine, I'm gonna dabble in the hood pussy one more time. Um, so we're going to watch, I know nothing about it. We're going to watch it. Uh, we're going to do the first six parts. It's about an hour. And then we're going to have a, um, we're going to have, I think they're longer than 10 minutes, Steph. Uh, hold on. Oh yeah. You're about to tell. Yeah. You're, yeah. They're about 10, nine to 11 minutes each. So yeah. So six parts ends at 40. Did I do six? I did six, right? So we'll end at 50 minutes, which means it'll take me two fucking hours to get through it. Cause you know me, I can't shut the fuck up. Uh, but you know, I like to entertain people and not just sit here and, um, uh, bring out the worst in my chat trying to trigger people with stupid jokes and off-color comments but whatever we'll get to that in a minute <clears throat> so we're gonna do that so the plan is we're gonna do six the first six parts tonight and then i'll probably do the next six parts on thursday and then we're gonna react to another cow uh yabahandra we haven't forget gg has not shut anything down we are gonna continue yabahandra reactions <laughs> But we'll get to that probably. We'll do a little breakup. We'll do two uh, Risa Tis uh, videos. And then we're going to check in on Yabahandra. And then we'll go back to Risa Tis. Then we'll check back in on Yabahandra again. It's going to be a good time for everybody except for Yabahandra because she's weak. It's going to be a real lot of fucking fun. So, Sunday. Lord. 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 A lot of people, God bless you and I thank you all for checking in on me, but a lot of people really tried to make what happened Sunday into 
A big so if all of you a lot of you don't know, I was on pistachio stream on Sunday. I should have been streaming. I I should I thought I was okay. There was I had an I had an anniversary on Saturday. I'm not gonna get into it. And I was I was so busy all weekend and Sunday night came and, and I was home and pistachio was streaming and I said, you know what, I'll go on with you, sure, why not? Whatever. It'll be it'll be a good time. And then we started and the anniversary is related to certain people in my life who I defend vehemently. And um I got a little testy and for about five minutes Maybe six minutes. I can't even tell. It wasn't even that long, guys. I said some very spicy things about certain people that I really don't take back because they say terrible things about everybody else. So it's just like, so I left the stream because I recognized that this isn't what I wanted to see to do. This isn't what I wanted to say. Like, I just don't want to be that person. I don't want to be like them. So I said to Pistachio, I'm going to go. And I texted her right after and I said, sorry for derailing your stream. My bad. And then like I kind of went to bed and I took my Twitter down because I already knew people were going to try to make this into a big deal. And frankly, it wasn't even that serious. And I didn't want to I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to talk about it. So I decked her. That was it. I don't go into hiding. I'm like Sam. I don't need to go into hiding. I just wanted a day off of Twitter to cool down and to reset myself because that is what adults do. But somebody like Sam, who has the emotional regulation of a toddler, would never understand that. So, of course, Sam tried to make a big deal about it today. And nobody's nobody outside of her, her degenerate chat takes her seriously. So I'm back today. I get back on Twitter and I'm checking up on all of the... Um, the tweets and the posts, and I'm just like, why is everyone thinking Gigi went full? FMG did a waddle victory, waddled around her victory lap. I, he's the same guy. He's never left. Uh, he's always been it. He had a mental breakdown. Then he eated his Twitter. I'm like, honey, it's called growth. I understand you wouldn't know what that means because the only thing that's grown on you is your waist size and your neck. <laughs> True fucking story, but it's called growth. I recognize that I was starting to say things I wasn't proud of. And listen, we all know that three years ago, I would have stayed on that fucking pistachio stream for four hours <laughs> saying crazy shit. I recognize within minutes that I don't want to be like a bunny and I don't want to be like a Sam. I don't want to be like an FFG or a Yaba. I just don't want to be that way, regardless of what, what's said about my mother. And I've been pretty numb to it all, as you all know, because it's just like, yeah, dementia. We get it. You think it's funny that my mother has dementia. Fucking ha ha, he he, ho ho. Whatever it is, what it is. But I think with the Saturday anniversary, which I'm not going to get into, and I think that just really, I didn't process it. And because I, I had Jesus Christ Superstar this weekend, I had brunches, we went to see Doom Chapter 2, I had tacos. Sunday night was like the first time I really sat the fuck down and thought about it. And while I was on Pistachio Stream, and because all of this is related to my mom, and I'm seeing this stuff and I'm reliving the shit that's been said, it really just got to me. And I said some uncouth things. Again, I don't apologize for the things I said because they don't deserve an apology, but I apologize for anybody I, I may have offended. For example, um, I feel really bad if I've offended any sex workers. That wasn't my intention. I just wanted to hit her below the belt because that's what Bunny does to people. Bunny Bunny has a near-death experience and she's now using her second chance at life to be the worst of the worst. The shit I've, people were sending me today that she's saying on Twitter, I'm like, people need to just ignore her, starve her of attention the way everyone else in her life does at this point. She's not fucking worth the energy. And that's what the conclusion I came to Sunday night was like, I'm giving this woman energy who's not worth my fucking time so i don't feel bad that i said that i just feel bad if i've offended anybody who's a sex worker so you have my honest apology it wasn't my intention i just wanted to hurt people because i was upset i was upset and and i'm 43 years old i'm not blaming anybody but Gigi, right i'm not blaming anybody but Gigi. i i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say well people forced me and people pushed me no no, no. i should have known better that as soon as those feelings started erupted i should have left but i didn't Okay, so anyway, um, so Sam went live earlier. I didn't watch it. Like I said, if I wanted to watch trash, I'd sit in the driveway and stare at a trash can for two hours. But I heard that she, I heard it was disgusting, which I, I think at this point we've all come to accept that Sam is just a very disgusting individual. The chat was disgusting. Sam was disgusting. Comments about my mother. My mother's an alcoholic. She has wet brain. I don't think, she doesn't think my mother has dementia. She's an alcohol. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Listen, Sam, I know you're listening. You don't know a lot about my mother, but I'm going to spill you some truths that I want you to know about her. So my mother's name is Lucy. My mother came to this country in 1973, I believe. And uh, she came here with nothing. And uh, the first thing she did with my father was go get minimum wage jobs to support her future children. Something you could never <laughs> fucking identify with. Worked her ass off minimum wage. 
we went we we wanted for nothing. my parents made minimum wage and we wanted for nothing christmases were always magical birthdays were always big parties like i don't know how they did it the way they did it but we had a home we had uh we had gifts for holidays we never i was a very I had the kinds of blessings that you would expect to have in a in like a middle to high middle class family. And we were probably lower middle class at this point is what I had to guess. I don't really know like the numbers. <clears throat> so she came to this country. She worked her ass off so we could have things that she didn't have. Let me tell you what my mother did not do, Sam. <laughs> tell you what my mother did not do. My mother never put utility bills in our names uh, to fuck over our us financially. Um, my mother never, I never got a phone call saying that my mother was arrested from stealing from the factory for where she works to buy whatever the fuck you needed to buy when you allegedly stole shit. I don't know. My mother, um, would have never <laughs> allowed a man to come into our home who had accused her of being a ped and who had accused us of uh, who had accused her of trafficking us as children my mother would have never allowed anybody like that around her beautiful well protected children and you want to know what else my mother never did sam my mother never asked me and my sister to leave the house so she could have a degenerate deadbeat degenerate piece of shit come over and have sex with her never happened so you can question my mother's dementia all she wants you all you want you would have been blessed to know my mother when she was at her peak because she could have shown you what it was like to be a mother who wanted to be a mother and not a mother who just became a mother because she saw paychecks coming out of her vag i said it i don't care and yaba you can go ahead and fucking rip a water bottle in half at your anger and slam a couple more doors nobody knows i'm gonna ask that you and yaba take a couple seats preferably at a parenting class don't worry about my mother. My mother is well taken care of. And even in her current state, would run circles around the two of you when it comes to being a good mother and protecting her children. Something neither of you know tits about. Just saying. So I'm not going to watch your stream. And Sam, here's my message to you. Another message. You've become a useful idiot for a certain somebody, a defendant in a future civil case. You've become her mouthpiece. I'm going to let you continue doing that. I'm not going to back and forth with you at this point because it's very clear. I know what you're doing. I've, everybody knows what Sam is doing, right? Sam and the defendant are doing. They're trying to get me to give the defendant something that can be used against me that's that's recent because all they have is stupid shit from three, four years ago that nobody gives a flying fuck about. So, Sam, I'm not going to react to your shit. You can stream about me every day with your fucking weird, obsessive, greasy hair and ringworm wrists or whatever the fuck's going on in your arm. I'm not going to address you until this court stuff is well on its way or it's over because you are not Sam right now. You are the defendant's puppet and I'm not giving either of you the satisfaction you so desperately want. We will meet again later on when things um, progress and I feel more comfortable with this court case. But until then, you don't exist. Your fiance, however, Yaba, I'll still be reacting to you one to two times a week. Because I think we've all learned that Yaba's the weak link in that house. Yaba's afraid. Sam talks to people like she thinks she's intimidating everybody. You know, Sam loves to, to throw her, her a peen around like she's intimidating. And Sam has yet to realize that the only person afraid of Sam is Yaba. Bitch, I'm not afraid of you, but I'm going to put you on mute until I get through this court shit. But Yaba, we know now that you're the weak link. And we all know that Yaba... Yaba is desperate to keep Sam shenanigans off of her channel. Yaba doesn't have these same people in her chat coming in. Yaba's not call, uh, addressing my mother on her chat. No, no, Yaba's saving all the de degeneracy for Sam's chat because she doesn't want the support group. And say what you will about the support group. I think there are people there that when if they find out what Sam has been doing are going to be so disgusted with Yaba, they're probably going to leave. So, Yaba, welcome to the pasture. I'm going to be reacting to you once or twice a week just so I can see you rage and keep you in the algorithm because the support group needs to know what kind of woman and mother you are. Cry. I said mother. Cry. Cry. Bang a water bottle into that bloated cabbage fast paste. Bloated cabbage fat. Holy shit, that's hard to say. Bloated cabbage patch face of yours 
Um, we're going to be seeing a lot of each other in the next couple weeks. On YouTube, of course. I wouldn't waste my time going anywhere near that fucking house because I imagine it stinks like failure and unwashed Walmart triple X panties. Donna's thank you, member, for four months. I can only hope my boys talk about me like you do about your mother. Listen, my mother's a great mother. That's why it's like, how can I get mad when a woman who couldn't do right by any of her children, a woman who is so desperate to convince us all that she's a good mom and grandmother that she has to post text messages and video clips on Twitter. Look, guys, uh, happy birthday to my grandkid. And I'm like, yeah, 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 you're still a shit mom and you're still a shit grandmother. And I don't want to fucking hear the ham hocks or the support group come at me for that comment after the nasty shit you had the balls to say about my mother. A woman whose shoes you are not even fit to lick. Go back to blowing dealers for marijuana and leave my fucking mother alone. Thanks, Sam. Oh, and go be a fucking mother to your kids. Thanks. Okay. We are going to watch Risa Tis. That's enough for Sam. You're not going to hear about Sam for a while. Uh, but Yaba, stay tuned. We'll have a Yaba underground. I made, I already, I made a, a cute little thumbnail for Yaba already. So I'm like, you know what? Let's continue triggering Yaba because yeah, it's so easy to get under Yaba's skin. And like I said, the support group needs to know what Yaba's fiance and stalker is doing on the other channel. Because I don't think Yaba wants them to know that. But, you know, we'll see what they think as the algorithm picks up. Thank you, that Amber Chick. Your mom sounds like an absolute... She was and she still is. And now we are blessings to her. Um, cause unlike Sam, <laughs> we, we're doing everything we can for our mother. Uh, cause that's what happens when you have a mother who takes care of you, you return the favor. Um, I'm going to pity fucking Sam if she ends up with dementia. I mean, she's got the, her kids who she's done all wrong by. And when the kids who live in that house now figure out who she is, I imagine they're going to be fucking pissed and want nothing to do with either of them, but not my problem. I had a good mother. Anywho, Mr. Bigu, thanks for the super chat. I lost my mother last year and the story of found broke my heart. Much love to you and your family. Well, exactly, Witty Widow. Like, don't talk about my mother. My mother worked for her, her, her amenities. My mother wasn't on her knees. And again, that's not a sex worker jab. That's a Sam jab to try to get free shit from people. But, you know, that's the difference between the degenerate who has kids out of necessity and a mother who has kids because she wants to spread the love. You guys ready for Risa Tease? I know nothing about this woman. I'm going to speed it at 1.25, I think. <sighs> So I picked this. Uh, I picked this up. It's a. It's an eight, seven and a half hour video. It's from uh, a channel that I forget the name. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. XOXO Gabby Mayo. I, I I linked the video in the description below. So if you want to go give the video a view directly and sub them up, feel free. Have a good time. Uh, but I wanted to give them credit. So this person strung together all of Risa Tis's TikToks into seven hours and twenty six minutes and fifty five seconds. I know nothing about this lady other than she. They didn't know who the fuck she married. So we're going to, I'm going to react to it. We're going to do six parts tonight, hopefully. <laughs> and then we're going to do six parts probably Thursday. We're going to visit Yaba Hondra this weekend to remind everybody who the fuck Yaba is. And then we'll go back. It's going to be a lovely two to three weeks. So are you all ready? Don't spoil it for me in chat. I know nothing about it, but I'm super excited to learn. Ladies and gentlemen, part one of who the fuck did I marry? I have her at 1.25. If it's too fast to, oh, where the hell's my banner? What do I what do I usually have under my face? Why am I missing stuff? Hold on. What did I do? Oh shit, hold on. What did I do? Oh, this is funny. We love that one. Yup is missing one. Why does this look different? No, that's me. We don't want to do that. I don't know what I did, guys. Well, this sucks ass. What <laughs> what the fuck is usually under my face? Oh, is that what it is? The, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. So I must have turned the logo. Uh, let me... Oh, okay, this... Got it, thank you. But I feel like... Oh, I know what it is. Okay. Mother effer, hold on. I have to adjust this. You know my OCD kicks in. We can't all just go live and steal Foodie Beauty's content. You know, some of us actually like to put effort into our streams. Okay, so we're going to do it this way, I guess. And I'm going to hide her below me so that way it doesn't piss me off too much. Okay. Oops. Okay, so this is better now, I think, right? Okay, much better. Okay. Here we go. Sorry. <clears throat> Please excuse the hair, but here is part one of... What's wrong with her hair? It looks very nice. Are those anal beads on the right side? I'm sorry. Why do I... Do Why am I even here? I knew this was going to be disgusting. Are those anal beads hanging from her mirror? Oh, you know what? I just realized it's probably a rosary bead. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The fuck did I marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th of okay. 2020. 
Okay. We met on Facebook. Should I be taking notes? 2020 was a very, you know, I'm gonna take notes on my phone. 2020 was a very tumultuous year. Facebook dating site, and we also- Oh, no, 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 that's your first mistake. Let me tell you something about dating. Ready? Let me tell you something. So this is March 4th, 2020, they met. I don't fuck with dating sites that are free. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I want to know that you at least have, like in other words, I don't want to fuck with the Sam Tefflers on Plenty of Fish. I want to know that you have a credit card or at least a debit card of some sort. You know what I mean? And when you go to the Plenty of Fishes or you go with the, um, what's the other one? Uh, the iHeart Cupids or the Facebook dating, everybody's on there for free. And you have a high chance of meeting a Sam Teffler. No fucking way. So <laughs> matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he, he was on both um, under What's two Hinge? different. Why do I think Hinge was for lesbians? Is Hinge for street? Is it? Is oh, I can't talk. Is Hinge for street people? What the fuck is Hinge? What's the one for lesbians? We have the grinders for the gays. What do the lesbians use? Names. So one. Oh, by the way, could somebody give me a clip of me ever calling those two degenerate scissor sisters? Because I remember speaking out against it when Negs and DC were doing it, and unlike Sam and Yaba, I don't flip flop with convenience. Um, does any can anybody provide me one clip? Because I'm sure Sam did not show that today on her stream, but Sam also knows her audience. They're not all there. Uh, I'd like to see that. If you have it, let me know. One was his actual name, and the other one was a variation, like a nickname, um, that he called himself. Different pictures. So it was a running joke between us. Oh, you ain't even recognize that um, you had matched with me on Hinge. No, I didn't. Um, and also, that should have been a also, Hinge is for straight. I don't know why Hinge thought- I thought Hinge was for the lesbians. Red flag. By the way, you will notice in this story, I called it the United Nations of red flags. It is so many red flags that, I mean, you would have thought I was colorblind because I ignored all of them. Oh, let me tell you. Somebody get this woman on the phone with me. I have some stories for her about YouTube. So... Listen, Dad, I'm not saying it doesn't work for everybody, and I'm not trying to sell people who are using it, but, like, I didn't have a good a good experience on that shit, like, 20 years ago, and I was like, no, see, this is why, like, you know, I met a broke ass, and I was like, this is why I need somebody, like, I need to know, Match.com, you at least got yourself a debit card or a prepaid card, I do not need a Sam Teffler sleeping on my motherfucking couch, not today, not tomorrow, and not even on Sunday, and I'm Catholic. Anyway, back to the story. We met around March 4th. Hey, leave it to Bubby. Exchanged everybody else to phone numbers. He called me, and we talked on the phone You're lucky, um, for yes. the first time. Yep. In the first phone call, he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. George, she had just moved to Georgia from okay, so San Diego to Georgia. That's a downgrade. No offense to Georgia, but I love San Diego. I don't know if grad school is still a supporter, but they are on Twitter. And when they post, I think it's grad schooler. When they post photos of San Diego, I just get all warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, I love, 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 love everything about San Diego. So no offense to Georgia, but that's a downgrade. His job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here Condoms. in Georgia. I'm not going to say the name. Ooh, who do you think it is? Heinz? Well, it can't be Heinz. That's Pennsylvania, right? Hey, Alexa, what's a major condiment company that's headquartered in Georgia? The major condiment company that is headquartered in Georgia is the Georgia Spice Company. Oh. They specialize in dry blended ingredients, salad dressings, you guys and hear rubs. That? The Georgia headquarters Okay, is Alexa, we got it. Georgia. Alexa, we got it. Alexa, we're good. It's the Georgia Spice Company. They spot they specialize in dry rub what the fuck she say? Salad dressings and dry rubs. I would have guessed like um who makes the yellow mustard? Frenchies. I would have guessed like French's mustards. And so we also talked about his childhood. He told me um, condoms, Rose. Condoms. He's from Philly. Both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Both of his parents were deceased. His father. Condoms, Rose. Condoms. 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 Blame it on olive oil. Um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. He also told me he um went. He briefly lived in Augusta, okay. um, with his family. He had two brothers and two okay. sisters okay. he also had two half brothers on his dad's side two brothers okay first phone call got it so i'm just giving you guys the backstory this was the first phone call we had so we talked about family we talked about friends we talked about our jobs at the time i was working at georgia state patrol um and he knew this and he just thought that was like wow you know so you work with troopers all day yes i did oh and really quick too i just want to address something this is not anger <laughs> 
the farms, listen, I agree with you guys. For those of you watching, Gigi should have known better than to um, share that information about his mother. Trust me, had I known now, then what I know now. But you guys know, I, I shared that at the very beginning of, of all of this because I didn't realize how nasty this area is. I just got reminded of that, I'm sorry. I didn't realize how nasty these people are. So I thought it would be an okay thing to share, but no, 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 weaponized. So I totally agree with you. This is for you future creators. Never share anything personal. Even if you want to relate to your audience, if you're in any kind of drama support, don't use it because then you have you have Basura like Sam Teffler trying to use it to get reactions out of you because she's so fucking uncreative, no talent, no humor. She can't hold a live stream on her own, which is why she had to grift a channel from her fiance. Like, let's just stop. Don't share personal shit with anybody. Had I known then that they people, I just didn't think people would be so disgusting to try to use that to hurt me now i know and that's why the other shit that i'm talking about today that stays silent i learned my lesson but farms you're right i get it um also in that phone call he explained to me that yep, he um used to play football he Ooh. explained that he used to play arena football i know nothing about arena football. what's arena football is that like flag football, football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs! But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to Good play one, arena Steph. football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Hold on. So this man had arena football. He worked for Apple and he worked for the Georgia Spice Company. Do you guys remember that skit on In Living Color? Um, oh my God! What was the name of the family where they were Jamaican? They're like, Hey, man! When I was your age, I had five jobs. I was a pilot. I was a student. Da, 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 da. I think it was called Hey, man! Right? That was the name of the sitcom within the show. That's what it reminds me of. This guy's had seven jobs already. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I, I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. I don't either. I'm kind of upset. So he told me, you know, I just I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing. Be and they well, Steph, because you know 2020. That's what I thought you meant. But it was a great, it was a great joke nonetheless. 2020, because that's when I told everybody. Whatever. Shut up. They're helping me to look for a house. Thanks, girl. Like, I'm Thanks for right now Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house. Ideally, in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, okay. I, I really would like to move out there. Okay. And so I thought, you know, I think that's a rosary bead, by the way. I think I called it anal beads. Oh God. This is, that's great. You know, you're looking to get a house. You just moved here. He's like, I don't really know too, too many people here because I spend all my time at work. And I feel like I could do 1.5. Do you guys agree or no? I'm going to try it. Let me know if it's too fast. You know, this job is really demanding. Okay. So that was our first phone call. We talked more. He talked a lot, which took me by surprise because I'm I get everything she's saying, but I also understand if some of you don't. So if you want me to go back down, let me know. I'm not really used to men talking more than me. Um, he eventually asked me out on a date. Our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th. 20. So that was three days. Hold on. Three days after they met. Okay. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said Cheesecake Factory. Oh, Cheesecake Factory. That menu's too damn big. Although, let me tell you something. I was shocked a couple months ago. My brother-in-law wanted to go to Cheesecake. My brother-in-law is a big bodybuilder guy. He loves to eat. So he likes Cheesecake Factory because they got a lot of shit to eat there. So he wanted to go to Cheesecake. And I'm not a huge fan of it. Even their cheesecake, I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's generic and eh, whatever. So I went there, but I ended up getting a ribeye. And let me tell you something. <laughs> it was one of the best ribeyes I ever had. Now, <laughs> hold that thought. I went back a second time because I wanted it so bad. It was so good, burned the fuck out of it, and it was well done. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. But I'm just, Cheesecake Factory does too much. Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed. And their food is so salty. Go don't, out. Don't sue me, Mr. Factory, but your food's fucking salty. Um, at the Cheesecake Factory, in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton exactly. County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically, we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area. San the tacos were delicious, uh, the milk expired. Are you talking to me or the lady on screen? The tacos I had on Sunday uh, after the movie, which for those of you not in the members only thing, I saw a Dune chapter two. I'm going to watch it again on streaming because I think I just need to watch it again. But I felt like it was very tailored to book readers. And my, my friend who I went with loves the books and he was like yeah they're definitely like he loved every second of it but he understands why i felt a little lost because i was like the first movie was very clear to follow and chapter two i was like what the fuck's going on but anyways these springs dunwoody area 
I was excited. Like I called my friends and was like, I got a date, you know, blah, 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 we'll see how it goes. I'm getting some D. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully he looks like his pictures because you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully he looks like his pictures. So on my way to our date, yeah. I took 285 and literally- Oh, she's getting real detailed. I didn't realize she was gonna do like a whole Garmin GPS narrative. Right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew- If this story ends with he found out where she lives and cut her brake lines, I'm out. What to do? So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station. And I mean, she is real detailed. It was a Chevron gas station. She was on 285. I'm surprised we didn't get, well, surprised we didn't get an exit number. And I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm uh, Steph, I'm starting to think this woman's my spirit animal. Uh, now I understand. I get it now. She's like me. <laughs> so now it makes sense. Stress kind of thing. He kind of paused. He got quiet. And he was like, you know, tell me exactly where you are. Drop your pin. So I dropped the pin. I don't know if I would do that with somebody else. I don't know if I'd do that. I would say, <clears throat> don't worry about it. My, You know what I mean? Like, Because you don't even know if this guy's going to be who he says he is. And now you're broke down on the side of the road. And you're like, hey, Mr. Hinge. Yeah, come and save me. Like, no. I'd be like, don't worry. My, I would lie and say my, my brother's here or somebody's here. But I'll call you when I get home. Fuck no when I invite somebody who I've never met to come out to 285 at night to help me with my car. No. And he came to... Absolutely not, Mel. Came to the gas station, got out the car, and I was I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures that I was like, oh my god, he's actually a attractive. That's like this is like six four, six five. Um, Ooh, oh, also, six four. God, I had an ex who was six six. God, he's batshit crazy, but oh my god, six six was lovely. So man, this batshit crazy. I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced, um, and that oh he, no, his ex-wife they had she had um, two children, a boy and a girl who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about twenty, and he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids, um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him um, out in California, and so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. Okay, makes she was sense. Still out in California. So far. The only red flag I have is this man works too much. And Cheesecake Factory. That's it. Everything else, I mean, it, it plays out. The kids were still out Checks in California. Out. Um, and so... My sense of adventure... Uh, you know what it is, Lex? I watched too much Investigation Discovery. No. You know, he was like, there's no... I, I can't stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. Okay. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. So this is just setting the stage. Again, that first conversation was... We talked about family, job, friends... Um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. Okay. He changes my tire, which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. I mean, if he showed up and he was real six, seven and delicious, then okay, I'd be like, I'm glad that I let my inhibitions down, but I don't think I would have. I think I would have been, if you were video chatting with him, maybe like if I was video chatting with this man and I knew he was who he says he was, but if I had never met this guy, I don't know. But if a six, seven man came up and changed my tire, I'd probably, you know, it'd be sexy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's sexy. Um, and then he proceeds to say, hey, I found a play, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, I just realized that's a, is that, that a, uh, what is that a braid? I thought that was part of the car seat, but it's moving with her. He followed me to the to the tire place. Oh, and she has a little, is that a headband or is that um is that entwined into her hair? Is that the right terminology? Cass well, thanks for being for six months. This is just setting the stage. I could have told you my life story by now. Listen, I get her. I get it. Look how long it's taking me to get through eight minutes. I get it. And then help me. Oh, are those heatless curls while she's driving? Do people do that? You get a tire, pay for it. So I was definitely like, Hey, wow. T-girl. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, I get the car, I get the tire fixed. We yeah. follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. Over. Oh, so the date still happens. Okay. Perimeter. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just this. Oh my God, I had butterflies. That that's. They that's held the hands that quickly, ladies and gentlemen. How do you feel about that? I'm trying to think of first date. Have I held a hand that? Who am I kidding? I almost practically turned into a hua on the front seat of one of them. That was batshit crazy guy, but he was six, 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 seven. I mean, come on. So I guess I can't complain that they held hands because at two o'clock in the morning, my good night kiss turned into being a whole bag in the car. So disappointed in myself. Look of a woman who had butterflies. <laughs> so I had butterflies. And um, we go in, there's a long wait. 
And so we sit outside and we just Memories. talk. And the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me uh -oh. what it is he's looking for. He tells me. All you need to learn from this Ataya story is if the universe pops your tire for the first day, call AAA and block their number. I mean, that's what it's going to sound like. Thanks for the super chat and stand designs. And thank you for not spoiling. I'm going to put it, take it off screen though, but I will rethink you at the end. Thank you. You know, I'm, I believe at the time he was 42. He was like, I want to get married and it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years oh, that's before nice. my mom passed away. My parents are 15. God. Wait. And I want that. I want marriage. Again, family. again, some people can't relate. A house like that is what I want. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm as a man, I'm ready to get married, but I want it to be for real because the first time, you know, it really hurt me when she cheated on me. So he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so he was like, what is it that you want? And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the okay. table that we wanted. Married. I don't want to bury my best friend because they're female. So that'd be awkward but i get that i get what she's trying to say but me and my best friends with the sex would be very awkward i don't think it would work out as a platinum gay i, I don't even know what i don't even know what, where would i start what would i do do you talk first what do you say do you greet each other do you do a little mating dance because because us we us, us the gays we just like how you doing i'm gg i'm nice to meet you boom let's do it but i feel like with a lady it requires a lot more attention and energy and i don't have time for that i don't have time for the sweet nothings the rose petals on the bed and i feel like that's how sex always is and i know you're all gonna start laughing or married for a long time but in my mind that would be what would need to happen with a woman and i don't have time for that it's too much and this is the end of part one yes castle dweller i thought that too Date number one, I want to get married and have kids. That's a problem. And you know what's funny? And I'm not saying this because I believe it. I'm not saying that I believe it. But stereotypically, correct me if I'm wrong, that's usually what people think the ladies do, right? People always assign that role to the females, where they're the ones who are always like, I want to get married first date. And that's usually the meme with the guy, like the crazy ex-girlfriend. And the guy's like, whoa. So it's kind of interesting that he came in saying that. Or I'm just a sexist pig. I don't know. But I feel like it's usually women who are accused of doing that way more than men. And I could be wrong. What do I know? Okay, so Texas is red flag. All right, who the fuck did I marry? Part two. You shut up, Steph. So we both um, put on the table right. what it is that we wanted. We okay. both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. Oh, I mean, listen, but she was in it. She was in it to win it too. So I guess she's 40 plus. She looks, is that she really over 40? Well, I guess if he was, but she could have been in her 30s, right? We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the di the yes. dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed, nice. we talked about people, which um, is kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was just, it was a good vibe. Okay. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. Ooh, which one? If it's all of you, this is I'm already stressed out by this. Let's get married. Let's hold hands. Let's have kids. If she played John, if he played John Lennon's "All of You," does she tell you what the song is? I don't know the name of the song, but it's well. By the time this video posts, I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about. I think I met my wife tonight. Oh. And I thought it was a sign, so I was like, "Oh my god!" So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight. So during this conversation, he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there, he went to San Diego State. It is, it's gotta be all of you. Does she ever remember or no? He played football be. for San Diego State. Um, he talked about- Man, see, okay. I once had a man try to tell me a story about athleticisms. I played so-and-so for something and it was the age of the internet already. And I Googled, I said, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And then it turns out they were like almost drafted or something and I was like, like, what? How? What? This is the part where I don't think I need to Google somebody when I first start talking to them after a first date. But when you start telling me stories that you're like Dan Marino's twin brother, or you are, um, you are uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes, blah blah blah, then I'm like, well, I'm gonna Google that because that is a tall tale. About how you know, life. He loved it out there, so he stayed. Um, that's when he joined the company. Um, and then he explained that he also did arena football, but only did it for about two or three years. He claims that while he was doing arena football, the team that he was on won a championship. I wonder if he means XFL. Isn't XFL considered arena football? Hey, Ale hey Alexa, is XFL considered arena football? From sportsbrief.com. Jeez. The main difference between the Arena Football League and other football leagues like the NFL okay. and the XFL oh, is not. that the Arena League is played in indoor stadiums similar to those that ice hockey teams play in. 
Oh, so Ordinary Girl trying to be fabulous wasn't trying to be facetious. It's literally football played in an arena. Okay. But again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was like, okay, I didn't know they had championships. And he was like, you know, he got I a love Dan Marino. Even today, damn it, Amber. Even today at Alexa, how old is Dan Marino? Dan Marino is 62 years He's old. He's 62 years old. He'd still get it. I don't care. And like, yeah, they got championships. And, you know, he was on that team. So he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple. Oh, or GQ model, a rapper. Exactly, Belinda. But it was in the store. Again, it was one of those. It's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. Why? So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife is because I asked. Ooh, Lex had a brother-in-law who was in real. Okay. He was not volunteering. Joe Montana could still get it too, Texas one. I'm with you on that one. All this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their And also, who came after him? Steve Young? Totally. All day, every day. Steve Young more than... I'm sorry, I was thinking of Steve Young. Joe Montana and eh, Steve Young. Yes. A lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a... Are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked oh, about yeah, yeah. that That's we talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time somebody I worked with. Okay. That will come back later. Oh. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah blah blah. Um okay. so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um I go home. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking. Is this talking, still the first date? <laughs> talking. Mind you, our first date was March seventh. And within about two and a half weeks. Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, Ooh, Red Lobster. Mm. To me, that's a much more offensive choice than Cheesecake Factory. However, their biscuits, Cheddar Bay biscuits with a side of ranch dressing, forget about it. Forget about it. You want to know what I would do for some free? You want, want to know? Uh, it's, how do I say this in a diplomatic way? <laughs> I wouldn't pull a Sam Tefler for some ganja, but I would pull a Sam Tefler for a couple of Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? And by the way, that's the new name now, pulling a Tefler. I don't even... I remember it. If you know, you know. If you don't know, ask her on in chat. Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at his place? Which he had like a studio type of situation like it clear where he was staying um i was like studio. it's like a studio apartment let's not hate on studios let's not be pretentious tisa uh, what is it risa let's not be pretentious risa but he kept telling me like this i would steph I would. temporary because i'm looking for a house like he showed me he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company okay. where she was out on maternity leave, but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to okay. help him find a town home or a single family house. Okay. So I was just like, okay, this is definitely temporary. Like he's not trying to stay here long term. And she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry. You know, this should have been taken care of before you got here. Was this man emailing himself? But it wasn't. Da, 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 da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I read. I it. know. I got to be a lady. I'm sorry. I read the email. Um. So the decision was. Yeah. Are we going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house? First no. No, no. Could you imagine, guys? Like, and I get it. She was excited because of a new relationship. But could you imagine? <laughs> you you go on a first date with a man and then lockdown happens. Terrible luck. But I would say, well, I guess we have to get used to video chatting and stream yarding for a minute. Can you imagine within weeks of meeting a man or woman... Or they or them or Z or Zim. I can't keep up anymore. Could you imagine within two weeks say, okay, whose house are we shacking in up, up in for the next three months? No, ma'am. I would have said, I'll see you on FaceTime. Mm -mm. Maybe you could stand on my front lawn and we can do sexy faces to each other. But no, to quarantine with you. for No, I just met you. And then what do you do if you hate him? I guess you can go home. There was nothing against dry. She could have said I'm an essential worker. She could have lied and left his ass. Mistake I made. Well, there's a lot. But this was a mistake I made. So ladies, caution moment. During one of our dates. She... <clears throat> Belinda said it. Belinda said it. I did not. But yes, she's the album in the relationship. Just fucking desperate. <laughs> Absolute desperation. Bless your heart, Risa. I get it. Everybody wants to be in love. But don't be a Yaba. Recognize the red flags and the signs and do something about them. Because um, keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Um, nothing physical or anything like that. Just 
two people who were who I thought were really on some. All right, let's see if this is going. If this, if this lying, going, inbred piece of shit. Grow into something. He came to my house. When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. He was in a studio. Oh, that's nice. So wait, hold on, one bedroom. Wait, what? House. I had a three bedroom. Oh, three bedroom. Two and a half two bath bedroom. townhome. That's nice. That's nice. He was in a studio. Now I'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened. So some t some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Can I turn okay. this off? Okay, so like that. Um, and I say that to say me. that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse and I'm in like a little studio. Yeah, let me, let me, let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do okay. to quarantine here. Okay. The decision was made quarantine in my house. So we, the state went on lockdown. He came and stayed with me um, in my home. And for the most part, in the initial beginning it was fine it was it was fine hey lex i just saw a screenshot i didn't attack her motherhood like you know what i'm talking about these fucking people love twisting the fucking shit i say what i said was lex i don't understand how you as a mother can sit there and listen to these disgusting things being said about my mother but keep fucking crying not you, Lex. You know what I'm talking about. The reason why I hesitate is because fucking I grew up lying. in the church. Jesus Christ. So for me, always it was really lying. like an internal struggle of, uh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. <laughs> and then Sam responds, unbelievable, shameful. <laughs> oh, God. Now you living with a dude. Sorry, I got distracted. Stop sending me shit. And he ain't your husband. Like, it was, it was. Putting my phone down. I'm putting my phone down. Better. And, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up. It was like that. It was not sitting right with me. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So it doesn't matter. Steph. There we go. Um, so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let I'll me clear something later. up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone or my car insurance. He paid the rent because my rent at the okay. time was less than a thousand dollars. Um, he paid the utility bills. Okay. And, on, and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, okay. I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Um, okay. and so he See, and that's, mm -mm. So that's what she was thinking about was the monies. He paid all the household bills. So my check really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. And I am not, this is where it's not gonna make me look good. Oh, what is it, Kate? Are you kidding? Or are you just gonna say something dumb? But it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so I kind of pushed. I know, Lex, I'm listening. I just couldn't believe she, the fucking audacity to say I attacked her motherhood. No, I did not. I asked a serious question. Why were you pissed off when the Negs of Bodega called me these things? But then why did you stop supporting me when Yaba and Sam called me these things? And how, as a mother, do you, I, that's, it's just, it's Lex, I don't get it. I don't get it. But again, another person who fucking had me fooled. It is what it is. To the side, the fact that, yeah, you shacking up. Pistachio was right once again. Shh, I'm listening. Because it's Vote like, is down. Like, Vote is down. Your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like, he's he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes. Because this was still March. Okay. So, we're living together. And I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. He's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him? Or is he going to buy a house where it's for us because we are going to try to this is, this is so involved for like a month two month relationship i can't even imagine are we gonna are you gonna buy a house for us or just for you meanwhile i'm like oh my god it's only been two months i feel like you've been here for fucking ever make this thing work be official we don't know yet jasmine we don't know yet so the question now on the table is what are we going to do because i didn't want to stay in um riverdale georgia i did not want to raise a family there i refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made. Why do we want to have babies in Clayton County, like school district? But can't you have a baby in Clayton County and move to another county? I don't understand. <laughs> Why can't, is Clayton County, oh, is Clayton County like the, the village and village of the damned where everybody passes on and wakes up pregnant with demon children? I don't get it. Let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him, but then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. You, anybody can get that. You could Photoshop it or you could just apply online. I think they give that shit to everybody. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the amount you're going to get, but it's like an estimated amount based on your, um, I guess based on your income or whatever you type into the website. So that means nothing. Le Risa, 
Should have called me. I could have told you all about this. Showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700. Oh, she just cut. Okay, so this is okay. Welcome to part three. All right, part three. Who the fuck did I marry? So this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top, okay. stating that he had been approved for a mortgage, for excuse me, for a seven hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollar mortgage or seven hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Okay. So he was like, "We can't go over seven fifty. And I said, "I remember asking him, "Can you afford the mortgage on a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house?" Because I know I can. Yikes. This is when he explains to me, "I told you how I played arena football. I invested oh. my money really well." So he said, "Like, can I? Can you give me that login to the Fidelity Morgan Stanley's? Thank you. I have money. That oh yeah, is it too fast? If it's too fast, let me know. Will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, we're good. Like, I'm, I'm financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage. So, oh, did you tell us your secret, Kate? I was too busy laughing at, uh, laughing at the woman who uh, spent two hours attacking my mother's dementia." trying to still make me uh, feel bad for... Oh, yeah, I know. And then she says it was defamation, and then prickly somebody on Twitter was like, honey, no, it wasn't. <laughs> like, you were arrested in 2012. God bless her, though. Everyone's lost their fucking minds around here. And you want to know what? It's all to hate on Foodie Beauty. Like, Jesus Christ, people need to go out and... Maybe need they need to do a Risa Tisa, get themselves some new drama, some storylines. This is crazy. He told me that his money was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank. He had an account with U.S. Bank. And, and that didn't bother you? And he had an offshore account. This is uh, first of all, offshore account would have been my first bling, 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 bling. Like, are we going to prison? I, listen, I just watched Griselda. Did anybody watch Griselda on the Netflixes? Such a good six-part show. Oh, hold on. I have to take this call. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not good news, it's no news. So I'm taking no news as good news. So let's continue, sorry. For those of you who know, know. If you don't know, it is, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> what was I doing? Oh, yeah, What he told me. The offshore account, I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S., <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. And I would have said, sir, <laughs> that sounds an awful lot like tax fraud. It's like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all look, I look paycheck to paycheck. I, again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. I said, so you have, so you have the money um, to pay for to pay for a home. Okay. I'm also holding in my hand a letter from Chase saying that he was approved for seven hundred fifty thousand. Which anybody can so get with a lie. I went off of what I saw. I don't even so think those go. Does those even go to your credit report, or do they just take you at your? I'm trying to imagine. It's been a, it's been a long time. For those of you who bought a house, if it's recent or you have a better memory, when you get that, you've been pre-approved. Because a real a realtor, before they take you seriously, wants to see what you're pre-approved for. And I'm trying to remember if... I guess you would have to put your credit score. So this in this instance, if this is going the direction I think it's going, I'm assuming it was photoshopped. Contacted hey, Rampage. Sir, I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. But okay. we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. He was fine with that. His whole attitude was, you know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. 
So we met a realtor. Okay. I, I would find houses that I wanted to. Yeah, Jasmine. But there's a, there's a certificate you get, though. Like, I don't remember how in-depth, but you have to give your social for that. Like, they're not just going to take your word that you make $5 million and then you waste a realtor's time, right? Like, there's got to be some kind of credit score check to get that pre-approval. So if he has no credit, whatever the fuck she was looking at was probably photoshopped. Sure. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, we could not tour a home. It would have to it would have to be a virtual tour. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia, not Cobb County, but nevertheless. Well, that's in beautiful. Five bedroom. Four, look at that. Four hundred sixty two five. Georgia is great if you want to own like a mansion. <laughs> it's so cheap to live there. But then it's Georgia. No offense to Georgia. But, like, you have to be, like, inland, away from, like, ocean and stuff, away from the Gulf. Well, George doesn't touch the Gulf, but sorry. Away from the ocean, away from the... And I don't think I could do that, because I imagine if you want to live closer to the ocean, you're going to not be paying these. But if you want to live on lands in a rural, suburban area in Georgia, you can buy such a big-ass house. Like, that is cheap. That house around here, forget it. Douglasville. I was fine with Douglasville. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a, um, a, a, a FaceTime tour of the house. The house, oh, okay. well, it was really a nice, it was a nice home. It's a soft check. Five bedrooms, yeah. four baths. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home. Okay. And the home was listed, I believe, for roughly 400 and something thousand. I really like the house. I could see 325. Okay. myself living there. I could see us living there. I could see us with the kid there. This is now April, just for timeline purposes. So did she start this story as the sun was coming up? Because now I'm looking, I'm like, wait, the sun is up, but she still has the same outfit on. <laughs> Like, I thought she was doing this at night for whatever reason. So she's been driving all morning telling this saga. Okay. This is April. So he really liked the house. He was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house. He was like, if you like it, because again, it was COVID. We weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there. So he said, um, I'll put an offer in. We'll see if it's accepted. I said, okay. So he puts an offer in. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. So for this house in Douglasville, he told me he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one thing that the realtor told us, he was We're like, not sure yet, Kate. We're only 24 minutes into a seven and a half hour story. A lot of people probably know the ending, but I'm asking for no spoilers. Like if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. So okay. he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. Okay. Um, and again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time... Oh my God, this was... A month. <laughs> this was a month into their relationship that they're going house hunting and having all these in-depth conversations. Good lord. That's my boyfriend. So the realtor was calling me. We're not doing all seven and a half tonight, Kate. No, 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 no. Like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I put the offer in, and what they're asking for um, is proof of funds. And I, and I know any. I don't. I did not know anything at this time about buying a house. So I was like, hey, you probably need to talk to him because. I'm not even listed on the mortgage, like from the paperwork I saw. One I month. In his name. This is crazy. So he um, he called him. Yeah. I guess they talked. I was yeah. not there, um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming. My ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved. But Rampage, a month after meeting somebody, I mean, I get love at first sight, but love at first sight and buying a house. And... <clears throat> They are going to try to I don't do know, a Kate. virtual I'm not closing. Sure. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put okay. down, I believe, 5000 He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. Okay. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. We should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay. Nope. I mean, you were ready to move into a house with somebody five months, four. I mean, you're ready in a month. But, f f uh, what was it, March to June? Three months? <laughs> we could be in a house together three months after starting our relationship, babe. Problem. My story would have ended right here. I said, I can't do this. This is too much. So. Like, I don't even want you in my house yet. And you want to share a house with me? No. This is what he told me. About three or four days later, I get a phone call from the, re from the realtor. And the wow. realtor is like, hey, I'm just checking to see what, you know, what you guys want to do about that house. So I was confused. I'm at work. Um, and I said, oh, I, I was told that he put an offer in. And the realtor was like, he did? I didn't know that he put an offer in. And I said, well, why wouldn't you know? Like, he told me he put the offer in and he um, he had paid earnest money, $5,000 earnest money. Okay. And so the realtor was like, well, let me call him and find out what's going on with that because I didn't know anything about it. So red flag, of course. So I call him and, he's, and he, in true narcissistic nature, 
He yeah, it's true good. death. Good point. And he like goes off. He's like cussing, going off. Like he shouldn't. Excuse me, I have hiccups. He shouldn't be calling you. Ooh, she had a Chantal moment. If he has a question, he should call me because I'm the one that's on a mortgage. He was like, and now it's you know it's gonna be an issue. And I said, well, did you put the offer in with him or not? And he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor, so I can give him the business. <sighs> so I never, I did not hear from that realtor again. So I was just like, is the house under contract or is it not? He was like, yes, the house is under contract. This is this is how crazy. From an offer. Okay, I mean that quick. I mean, I guess that quick. I don't know. Like, like, and you, you didn't confer with the. Oh, come on, lady. Lady. Things work out. About three days later, on Realtor.com, <sighs> I'm asleep. looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm gonna decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So. Oh my God! Please tell me. Don't tell me, but please tell me. He saw that someone else had it under contract, and he lied and said he did. Please, <laughs> don't tell me though. Don't tell me. Show my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. Oh, no. He was like, I, I, like, did you not believe me? And I ain't had a heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. Oh, <laughs> like, no. it seemed too good to be true. Um, but once I saw the house was under contract, I absolutely believe that, okay, th it's under contract with him. Like, Please tell me this woman did not end up moving out of her show. Oh, God. Yeah. We're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Um, and so we had driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So yeah. we had driven by the house. At this point, he never like, even went in the house, right? Did I hear that correctly? Never even went in this house. Like I want us to start looking. Or maybe for she did, and I missed that part. Furniture, so that way we can go ahead and order it. So when when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because you know it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes yeah. um, for furniture to be delivered. Especially if they don't have now, it's too much. Like he was he was very methodical and planning and saying this is what we need to do. So we started yeah. going to Home Depot, Lowe's, um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliances. He had a printout. Let me be clear. He had a printout. So it said on there that they were going to take the appliances. Virtual so tour. To, oh, God, I missed that part. Get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, uh, new microwave, all that uh, stuff. So we went to Home Depot and Lowe's, and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances, and... Sorry, I had to give Dexter a little pet. Here's where we get into the shopping. All right, part four, I think, or five? I've lost track already. Oh, I'm actually doing, doing pretty good time. Okay, so we're going to be able to do six parts in a reasonable time. Let's do it. All right, part four. So, we go to Home Depot, we go to Lowe's. Wait, they already made an HBO show out of it? What are you talking about? <laughs> or is there a show on HBO called Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm choosing all these appliances. Kate, it's too He's much. taking pictures of the, of the, um, the skewed arm. Belinda said it best. I don't know if you hear him. Belinda said it. Belinda goes, this woman is the Yaba in the relationship. I was like, so fucking true. We have representatives helping us. And he basically so explained to them, hey, we're, we're buying a house. Uh, uh. We should be closing sometime in June. Can we order this stuff now? Can I can I put a hold on it? Oh, like she's got a little stain in her left breasticle. It's making me so mad. Did you guys see? I don't know if she sneezed. It got a boogie down there. It's probably too hard for you to see, but it's right here. It looks like, like it doesn't look like a crumb or nothing. It looks like a crusty booger. You know, like if you sneeze back, and a little boogie gets on your sleeve or something, you're like, eh, and then it's just, it just, it looks like a little boogie on her left breasticle. It's making me so mad. Like, what can we do? Because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery. I stood there. As the Home Depot rep said, we can hold it in our warehouse. Like, you can buy something and we can hold it. People oh, do it all God. the time, especially. Done wasting the Home Depot's time and everything. Wasting the damn Home Depot's time. It's COVID. Kate Winslet, that printer's gonna, that printer's gonna be timeless. In 10 years, when the rest of technology has moved forward, <laughs> Yama's $7,000 antiquated printer is going to be making that family tons of fucking money. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Get ready, Indiana. Meet your new Rockefeller family. <laughs> so I watched him pay. Um, I want to say it was about three or it was either three fifty or five hundred. Yeah, I watched oh. him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances. Yeah, with a credit card that probably wasn't his. Let's continue. For them, and they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I watched this. So I was like, okay. You watched you like, watched somebody's credit card. We got the appliances. Next, let's go to Rooms to Go and Ashley Furniture and find um Ashley Oh, her finger probably got too big Everest. Furniture. So we went all around Rooms to Go. We went yeah. to Ashley Furniture. We went to American Signature. And I I, I saw all these things that I wanted again. Ashley for, I like how, I don't know if we have an American Signature. We have Ashley Furniture. We have Rooms to Go. I don't know if we have an American Signature. I don't even know what the hell that is. We have Haverty's. Is it Haverty's or Hofferman's? I think it's Haverty's. Haverty's, we have Canes, 
We have uh, the shit that she just said, but I don't think I, we have an American signature. If we do, I've never heard of it. Pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. Isn't that, that crazy, little up. boots? They haven't even seen the inside of the house physically, and she's buying appliances. It's too much. Because, again, I just saw that we held the appliances. So I was like, okay, that's that's fine. It's um, too much. So April turns into May. Yeah. May 2020 comes. Okay. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes, and obviously we had not done inspection and i'm asking him all the time what's so what's the deal with the house he was like well because of covid they're trying to get someone to do the inspection but the guy that they had it was always something the guy they had caught covid so they're gonna have to get somebody else and he's like he's like 15 houses backed up so it'll be a while oh, we have canes no cane we have canes furniture with a k but like k-a-n-e apostrophe s but then we have we do i think we do have a canes chicken the chicken tenders but that's c-a-i-n right i don't fucking know but yeah, we have both. It's canes and canes. Furnitures and fatties. So at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May. No, you look okay. I started recording um, audio oh, diaries. Oh. I don't know why. I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts. How oh, very Carrie Bradshaw of her. Is this turning into Sex in the City? In an audio diary. And I still have them. And I would I would save them by the date. And Is an ex ever really an ex? <laughs> and um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind mm -hmm. so i was like i knew i knew there was something something was nagging me like mm. you should have been nagged way earlier but i'm glad she finally got there at some point but i i kept raising canes i'm sorry you're right there's raising canes the chickens thanks steph and everyone else there's ra and or girl there's raising canes the chickens but then there's canes furniture thank you pushing it out of my mind i was like you saw th this is what i reminded myself you saw him pay for the appliances you know the house is under You saw somebody pay for that. Contract. You know that he told you I know, I'm getting hungry that now. Um, he's the one who put the house under contract. Yeah, why would like I remember saying to myself, why would he lie about that? This is so easy to verify. Why would he Because Risa Tisa, let me tell you a little something about the world that I've learned is that people are just cruel and they love to see other people suffer, they get off on it, turns them on. And uh, that's just what it is. Some people are like that. Hope that clarifies things. Lie about that. Have you caught him in any other lie? And at the time, the answer was no. Um, so I really was like, maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do. Like I, I was oh, she's she's like blaming herself now. Oh, you're not the problem. I'm just not used to having a good guy. I can't even handle it. Questioning myself and then answering my own questions. So I can't handle it. Inspection didn't happen. Around mid-May, I found out I was pregnant. May 2020. When I found out I was pregnant, he was ecstatic, and I was like, oh shit. The reason why I was oh shit is because number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was, I, I felt like it was probably gonna be a high-risk pregnancy. Um, and I wasn't married. And that nagged, I cannot tell y'all how much it nagged me. There was a lot of internal <clears throat> struggle in between. My family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point. I told them, you know, that I was pregnant, um, went to the doctor, everything looked good. Um, but again, because it was COVID, he couldn't go in with me um, into the actual room. So, you know, doing any sort of ultrasound, doing the blood test, because my HCG levels were really high. So the doctor was like, hey, it might be twins. We don't know yet. Um, you're still kind of Imagine. Thank God. Early, you know, she was not pregnant, I'm assuming, right? Long. Um, I shouldn't say that. Hopefully she didn't lose the miscarry. But... They gave me a due don't date. Don't tell me. The due date was January 26th. I am, I am. Um, so... so she was pregnant. Was she yeah. really pregnant? Uh, Maybe I was distracted. I'm sorry, Steph. Was she really pregnant? I don't want to tap it back. May found out I was pregnant. She so was. So there okay. was now more oh, of a sad. push into we gotta get a house. We gotta get the fuck up out of here. I'm not having a baby in Riverdale. Okay, none against Riverdale, but I ain't having a baby. Why doesn't this woman want to have geographic babies? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Why? Does, what is her thing? Like, I don't want to have a baby in Clayton County. I don't want to have a baby at Riverdale. Like, where is it? A, like, like it's not like. It would be like dual citizenship. Like you can have a baby in Clayton County or whatever the fuck she said, and your baby can still reside in Buckhead, right? Like Georgia doesn't have crazy rules like that, do they? In Riverdale, so it's too much. We need, we need to we need to find out what's going on with this house. And so he was very he was on top of it. He had an answer for everything. Um, he was like, you know, I'm a call and find out what's going on. Blah blah blah. Um, he then magically told me about a week later. Oh, they're going to do inspection on the on the house like in two days okay so i was just like okay keep in mind i'm i'm taking his word for it i'm taking his word for all this so he's like they're going to do an inspection um i would have said when and where i'll be there once we get the inspection report back then we will know 
what you know what we are going to be responsible for what, what are we getting ourselves into so um <laughs> i guess they did an inspection okay. he showed it, me an inspection. i guess they i could never imagine buying a house um i can't imagine buying a house and not wanting to be oh i guess the inspection was done like i want to know everything is there black mold were there termites how would what do they what do the ducks look like the ducts in the like the AC, like that shit i want to know and in my mind I was like yeah it was done don't worry about it i'd say i want an inspection report like before i sign anything i because when i bought this house there was shit that i was like uh-uh you gotta clean that you gotta clean that and i was like if you don't i'm pulling out and they did it they the brand new du- ac ducts like i was a little biatch so no, I want to see inspection reports, but I know this is all bullshit anyway. But the fact that she wasn't like, I want to see them too. Why not? Inspection report. Um, the only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced, which he, I remember he was very happy about. Um, and the issues that they that there were for the house were minor. It was not. It was not a bad because we did have discussion about it. He was like, it's not. It's nothing that we can't handle. <sighs> then he said that we were set to close um, the end of May. I want to report too. Yes. We were set to close the end of May. Okay. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. Oh God. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual? And I okay, and I and I can, and that's a good lie because it was the pandemic. Like that's a lie I could get behind. But the other shit, I'll put a mask on. I'll double mask it. I'll get an N95 and N97. I'll get an N1024 if I have to. I'm gonna be at the inspection. I'm gonna be at these major events. But whatever. Virtual closing. Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are not closing in the office. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the paperwork. This is what he's telling me. And so he was like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. And so for some reason, again, there's still that. I mean, I think I understand a virtual one rampage. Like sometimes they'll just send you the documents to e-sign and e-file. And remember, it was the pandemic. Like, I'm sure a lot of title agencies might not have been open or weren't allowed to be open. So I'm sure I didn't buy a house during the pandemic, but for anybody who did, I'm sure it was a slightly different process. A nagging part. For some reason, I didn't start packing. I, anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've done it enough in my life. I hate no, moving. No, I hate it so much. But I did much. not start packing up that house at all. I was just I hate like, it so much. you know, I'm pregnant. My body was changing so fast that it was like, I could barely keep my eyes open half the day. Um, and so, no, I didn't start packing. And I remember I did record, again, I was recording audio diaries just about every day. When something didn't sit right, I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. Um, and so I remember talking to- I think the pandemic just, just had her nut. I think the pandemic just drove her cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That is my absolute guess, is that I'm going to blame the pandemic on this one. Myself in my little prayer closet, because that's where I would do my recordings. And I remember thinking, what if he, what if we don't get this house? Like, what if we don't get, what if he's lying? But again, there goes that thought process of why would he lie about this? Like, who makes up that they're buying a house when in fact they're not? Crazy people, yes. People who like to inflict uh, mental anguish on others, yes. Oh, I hope that <laughs> that helps. And then he's showing you all this paperwork. Like, come on, you can't be that jaded. Yes, uh, yes. Your first mistakes were not demanding to be involved in the process. Ladies and gentlemen, if you meet somebody who wants to buy a house with you this quickly, ask to be involved in the process. Ask to look at receipts, ask to be at the inspection, ask for the PDF inspection report from the lovely inspector guy or lady who did the inspection. Don't just take somebody's word for it. That is cuckoo for fucking Cocoa Puffs. Thank you. That you don't even believe what's in front of you. All right. So now we're going to go into part five. Oh, this is this is going by quickly. Okay, part five. Okay. Who the fuck did I marry? So I'm questioning all this stuff in my head. I, I like that she came into this with a title. Love it. Audio diaries. And then once again, I'm like, but look at what you look at what he's giving you. Like he's paying. He, it wasn't a question about money. It was just a question of, are we really, are we really about to move into this house? And <clears throat> keep in mind, he's paying all the household bills. He still is. So was he though? I hope so. Probably not though. Closed before Memorial Day. We did it. There was an excuse. There was always an excuse with him. Always an excuse. And I, red flag. I didn't know enough about the process to question stuff because I really wasn't involved the way I should have been. And it was giving me a lot of anxiety. So I'm pregnant with a lot of anxiety. Um, and if push, if I'm gonna be 100% honest with y'all, I was not expecting that I was probably going to have 
a healthy pregnancy because I was stressed. And so, what I was stressed about is I didn't I already know I got foreshadowings of what was going on because I wasn't really involved the way that a normal relationship would be involved. Just being honest. Okay. Um, so we did not close. Oh my God, Dex I gotta put my other AirPod in because Dexter keeps licking his little paw. I gotta give him his Apoquil for with his dinner. And I can't take much more of it. All I hear is lick, 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 lick. He's driving me nuts. I love you, buddy. I know, I'm sorry. I love you, Bubba, but I can't. Close. Hold, let me know if you guys can still hear. Hopefully putting this in didn't fuck everything else up. Around, did we move? Oh, she's, she's a lot in surround sound. Now into June. This is now going into June. I'm sorry, Around Bubba, I love you. June 5th. You're a good boy. I looked at the house again on realtor.com. Yeah. I don't know what made me do it other than, and I don't mean to sound super spiritual. I know that people are like, you know, you may or may not believe in God, but I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, probably the Holy Spirit was like, look at that house on realtor.com. I mean, it could have been the Holy Spirit, but I feel like it probably was common sense. I'm not, I'm, this is not a knock on the Holy Spirit. Give me some Holy Spirit. Lord knows I need it right now. But I feel like it's just a common sense thing to do. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this certain way about this man. I feel like he may or may not be lying to me. I'm going to take a little peek at redrealtor.com. That would be me. Maybe that was the Holy Spirit. Maybe I am giving common sense the wrong name. Maybe her common sense is the Holy Spirit. But I would have checked a long time before that. But whatever. So I looked at the house on realtor.com. This was around June 5th. It showed that the house was off the market. And I remember being like, okay, wait, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because ex-husband is telling me we're about to close on the house. We're about to close. It's our house. We got furniture, da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Um, he's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently yeah. is completely out of the picture. But totally. again, I was not heavily involved. I, how could you not be? So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market. What the fuck does off market mean? Like now I'm really freaking out. It means it ain't yours lady. <laughs> it means it is not your house. So it shows the name of- You get door number three, a lifetime supply of chicken feed. God, remember, remember, let's make a deal. I think I've asked this before, but I'm gonna ask it again. Did you guys ever watch that show when you were a kid? And when I was a kid, I thought that like, the bad doors were real gifts. I was like, oh, she won a goat. <laughs> I was like, oh, she won she won chicken feed for life. I really actually believed that when I was a kid. And now I realize it was not true. But I'm like, where did the goats and chicken feed come from? Of the real estate agent for the I'm seller. So, I'm so shameful. I don't remember her name. I called her. So silly. And I said, you know, my, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, my husband and I, even though I wasn't married, my husband and I were looking at this house at 123 Main Street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Or, you know, I, I pulled that card. And she was like, oh, no, ma'am. Um, the home closed yesterday. It closed June 4th. Again, there are certain dates I just remember. Um, and I said, oh, it closed June 4th? I was like, really? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and she said, yes, ma'am. She was like, um, my, my sellers sold the house. And I was like, oh, man, okay. Well, I said, my husband and I really wanted, you know, we love the pictures of it and we're getting ready to start a family. So I would have loved to have been able to, you know, have the opportunity to see it. I don't think they got the chicken feed, did they? I don't think so. Chicken feed, not feet. I asked her something. I don't remember the specific question I asked her. Well, and I don't even, I, I know why I asked the question because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. So I asked her something about the buyers and I remember, and somehow... Again, forgive me, I don't remember the question I asked her, but the answer was that it was an older white couple. Older white couple. So I get off the phone with her, I record an audio diary, and in the audio diary- Oh, I can't wait. I hope she started each audio diary like they did in Star Trek. What did they say? Captain's log, but I want to hear Reese's log. May 20, I'm sorry, June 2020. I specifically say, okay, there is no house. He's gonna to have to get out of this lie somehow. Because now I realize at the very least, he was lying. Now, this would have been the end of my relationship for sure. I would have ended it way before this part. <laughs> but this would have been the official end. Spoiler alert, as I'm sure you all know, there's another six hours and 40 minutes of this shit. So I'm assuming this was not the end of the relationship. Let's continue. Oh, shit, I hit mute by accident. Um, him being the one who was under contract. Okay. I knew enough about that. So I was like, what, um... How was he going to get out of this? Again, I'm li I've listened to the audio diary in 2024. I literally said in that audio diary, how was he going to get out of this lie? And I was trying to think of ways on how he's going to do it. And something said to me, because I say it on the audio diary, I said, um, he's going to say it's a bad deal. And he's going to say he wants to pull out. Y'all keep in mind, I am pregnant. So I had a decision to make. 
If you have to start concocting ways to trap your man's or, or partner, I guess, ladies, man's partner into... If you have to trick them into making them knowingly lie to you so you could say, ha, I got you. Like, what the fuck are you still doing? I just, whatever. As ugly as this decision was, I made the decision. Like the stream, Tubby Custards. Hold on, let's get a little peanut. Because I'm sure that a couple of degenerates are listening. We all know how much they love peanut. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I just swallowed a piece of dust. Oh, I still can't feel the audacity of somebody uh, who could, who continues supporting Sam, trying to convince me that Peanut was the bad guy. Oh my goodness! All the all those wolves take their sheep's clothing off at some point, don't they? You're about to have a baby with this man. He's paying all the household bills. Let him get out of line, and that's what I did. But like, I purposely like that's just such a bad like. If I gotta make you lie to me, the fucking relationship sucks. But I think we all agree on that, so I don't know why the hell I'm saying it out loud. Made the decision that I knew he was going to come back and I knew he was going to give me some bullshit on why he couldn't buy the house because he didn't know that I knew that house is already sold. The house is already sold. Absolute fucking healthy relationship. Melk expiring. Thanks for becoming a new member. Much appreciated. I'm going to take you off screen though because it's a little distracting but I will thank you again at the end. Um, and this is the part where I said I'm going to be honest even though it's going to make me look bad because most women in their right mind would have would have been like I'm out. Yep. And I didn't. Oh. Uh, enjoying this coverage, says Sandy, member for six months. Thank you so much. Uh, I've managed to not watch anything about this, so I'm in for the ride with you. Yeah, this is, this is fantastic. And we're going to have, like, if I do 50-minute part, uh, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm going to have, like, five or six more episodes, uh, streams about this. So, yeah, buckle in. Hey, Dill Pickle Nugget. So, um, sure enough, he came home. Yeah. He didn't really say anything that day. The next day, I asked him about the house. Yeah. And he said, my friend, the realtor, um, he was like, I'm talking to him because something's going on with the interest rate. And when he said that, I felt so much. I guess he really thought so little of her. <laughs> and he was like, this woman's not going to go look for herself. And she did it for the longest time. Kudos to her for finally doing it. Thanks to the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's what she says. Uh, but like, what a, what a bold lie to tell knowing how easily it could be debunked but i mean he had her going right much relief because i knew that i had been prepared for he's gonna give me some bullshit so when he said there's something with the interest rate i said you know what if the this is literally what i said y'all if the interest rate isn't good then we shouldn't move there we should probably let this house go we should cancel whatever furniture we we ordered or you know appliances and let's just look for another house i said i would like to be moved before the end of the year I said, I really don't want to be nine months pregnant moving into a house. I would like, I would like to be done with this before then. And he was, he, the way I said it was so calm. And yeah. he was like, okay. He was like, I'm going to call the friend, the realtor and tell him I'm backing out of the house. I feel like he was calling movie phone every time. And he was just sitting there listening to like, dude, chapter two, well, actually 20, well, what came out in 2020? Nothing. I really, uh, the pandemic rated R showtimes at two. And he's like, yeah, yeah, realist, real, yeah. We need that house, yeah. But kick the old, kick, kick the old Caucasian couple out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Pandemic part two, showing at 1 p.m. And I'm gonna see if I can get my earnest money back. And I remember looking at him. I was standing in the kitchen, and I cocked my head to the side, and I said, "Okay, get your earnest money back, and let's find another house." And so that's how that first house fell through. So, um, wait, wait, wait. Or I'm looking. I keep looking at this to see how much time I have, because you know they only give you 10 minutes. Wait, so, what? This is part five. Part six is coming up, but. Um, subsequently, what ends up happening the next week, which is mid-June. But you know, <laughs> this is what I don't get. She already knows he's lying, and she's literally f getting him to lie. And then sleeping next to him or with him this entire time. So then fast forward two weeks. How do you not at that point say, I know you're lying to me? Exactly, Sandy S. The first house? What do you mean the first house? That would have... Let me tell you a story, Okay. The only time it's acceptable to tell a lie to catch a lie. My best friend from high school, <laughs> bless her heart, <laughs> she had cut class that day. And um, she had come home in the morning to intercept the phone call. You know the phone call that you would sometimes get that would get left in answering machines? She cut school. She went home. She erased the answering machine. She, I, I wasn't with her. I don't fucking know what she did all day. Probably with boys because God bless her. She's a boy crazy. She came home after school 
as she walks upstairs, and there was a second floor, uh, like, they, they own the house, but, like, the grip, doesn't matter. She walks upstairs, she walks into the kitchen, and she goes, um, hey, mom. <laughs> she goes, honey, how was school today? <laughs> she goes, it was good. <laughs> she goes, well, how was, um, I forgot, how was, uh, the math quiz or something you were going to take? I forgot which, which she asked the question. Or my friend could tell lie, it was good. Before she could finish, it was good. She got a, she got a hand across her face. This was like 94. Everybody calm the fuck down. She got a hand across the face. So apparently, her mother worked for the school system. And she just happened to, I guess, had seen somebody at lunch who was like an administrator where we went to school. <laughs> she was like, where's your daughter today? And her mother was like, what do you mean? <laughs> she's like, oh, she's not in class. She's out sick. Yeah. Hand across it. That's the only time to accept acceptably lie to catch someone in a lie is when you want to be a good parent. Well, I don't know if hitting kids a good parent, but back in the 90s, it's what we did. It's what happened. Sorry, I'm a product of the 80s and 90s. I don't know what to tell you. I got it in the mall once because I put a, I made a seat in the mall. Like we just did. We got hands. Sorry. Different time then. I was at work. Um, and I How the hell did I get to this part? Oh, about telling a lie to catch a lie. Got it. Sorry, cramping started bleeding oh no um, and at this point my doctor i had just had an ultrasound earlier that day so i went to work because the ultrasound was was fine yeah. i went to work and the cramping and the bleeding started and i started crying because i, I kind of knew what was going on and um my doctor had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound they did not see a heartbeat so she was That's like sad. this pregnancy is not going to be viable sad. so i'm crying and hysterical and now we're going to get into part six all right, last part, and then I'm going to go lay in bed and do what I do best. <laughs> no, not that. I'm going to eat a gummy. All right, part six. This is the last part for stream one. Everybody buckle in. So sadly, she just miscarried. She does not have a viable pregnancy. Part six. Okay. Oh, we're not in the car anymore. We're at the mustard factory. Love it. So this is part six of okay. who the fuck did I marry? So, Lady, what's your language? <laughs> So obviously, um, my doctor had called and told me there was no heartbeat. The pregnancy was not viable at that so point, sad. and I was cramping. And so I have a question: Does she have those beautiful curls because of that thing she had on her head? Those um, what did you call them? Non-warm cur. The fuck you call them boots? Non-warm curlers or cold curlers? Cold pressed coffee curlers? I don't know what the fuck they're called. But is that why her curls look so beautiful? Spotting at work. Went into my best friend's office and immediately started crying. She was like, "What's going on?" And I said, um, "I told her what the doctor said." And she grabbed her keys, grabbed her purse, and was like, let's go, I'm taking you home. On my way home, I called my boyfriend and I told him what the doctor said. And he was like, I'll meet you at home. So he was coming from Duluth, went straight home. Okay. Um, and so about 20... Turn her up. Oh, she's as high as she can go. I'm so oh, hold on. I have a little bit I can do. Not much, though. This is the best I can do, Meg. Four forty eight hours late. Okay. Uh, maybe Meg's Meg might be having a hard time with the speed. Uh, because it has been kind of fast and some of you might have been complaining but Clive's in the house and has been paying attention. So since this is the last part and it's only 728, well 1.5 the last, well 1.25 the last 10 minutes and then go from there. I had a doctor's appointment. Heart, he heart, heatless curlers. It says heartless but I think you meant heatless. And my doctor gave me three Thank options. You. Oh, that's sad. Oh. First option. Let everything happen naturally. Oh. Your body will expel the fetus on its own. I've had people who have it. Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Second option. The abortion. You can take a pill, which well, will induce yeah. expelling the fetus at home. The pill basically will cause you to Have an abortion. contract and expel. I mean, I get, even though the fetus is viable, in my mind, I still think abortion. Sorry. But you know what I mean. It'll... <clears throat> which is probably what option three is going to be. I think is what she's going to say. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. Yeah. I did not... Which I guess is not an abortion. I should say that. I'm sorry. Abortion is a totally different thing. I was thinking of DNC. I want to do a DNC because I did not want to be in a hospital with COVID going on. Um, oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Oh, this is so crazy. I keep, forgetting it's during, I keep forgetting it's during the pandemic. And for whatever reason, I did not do the option of let it happen naturally. So I chose to do the pill. His I mean, which ones? I don't even... How do you even make that decision? <laughs> like, which one's really better? It's terrible. Day was um, June 17th. My ex's boyfriend... Excuse me. My ex's birthday was June 17th. So the decision was made. We're going to celebrate his birthday that day. Go out to eat. Um, and then that night, I would take the pill. Cause you think they went to Cheesecake Factory? Both were off from work the next two days, next two or three days. So, um, went out to eat to try to... I mean, death is another, like, seven hours, six and a half hours, so it can't all be sad, right? I hope not. Celebrate as best we could. 
and then took the pill that night. That night was the most traumatic, excruciating pain Oof. I've ever felt. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. I do not recommend any woman, if preferably you don't have to go through that, but I don't recommend taking that pill. But would it, would the pain still, I don't, I don't know if anyone's gone through this if you want to talk about it, but is it because she took a pill or is, or is it just because of the process? Like I imagine even without the pill, the process probably has to be not pleasant either. I don't, uh, although I guess because the pill forces the contract, I don't, either way it's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. If you don't have to, don't do it. Um, I say I spent the whole night in the bathroom, just crying Oof. in so much pain. Oof. I couldn't take. They gave me a narcotic. I couldn't take it because it was. I found out I was allergic to it, so it was causing. Me oh no! I, I would. I would. No, I don't know what I would do. No. Nope. It, it, it was a mess. So. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. And he was right there. You know, he was scared that he needed to take me to the ER. But in the morning, the pain kind of subsided. So. About 72 <coughs> hours later, I had another doctor's appointment where the purpose of this appointment was to do an ultrasound to see if everything had passed. Oh. Everything did not pass. What a but shitty ultrasound. That, the doctor was like, we're going to have to do a DNC. Um, so this poor woman decides she, th she thinks the best option is going to be the pill that she suffers through one fucking night and then she goes in and has to do option three anyway. That's just fucking horrific. DNC was scheduled for the first week of July my boyfriend my ex was going to take me um that was always the plan two days before my no. procedure he no. tells me he no. comes home and tells me that he is up for a promotion he's up to he's up to be promoted to vp to what head referee vp of what oh the georgia spice company <laughs> because of this the president of the company <coughs> excuse me is coming in and it was going to be this huge business meeting he had to go to um, the business meeting. It's got to be Georgia Spice Company for the day of my surgery, and so I'm just I'm I'm throwing a fit because I was like, you yeah, I would too. You, there's no way you can do that meeting. Like I need you to take me to the hospital and all this other stuff. And so he offered VP and a success. Shut up, Melkard. To have his sister take me no. to the hospital. No, 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 no. Um, apparently, his sister lived in Douglasville. I was like, no, because I've never met her. Yeah, like, I'm not. I know. No. I'm not having this. I'm not having this emotional moment with your fucking sister. No. This is too much. Stranger taken to the hospital. No. Yes. This is a private situation. Like what a what a traumatic event. What an, I don't want to say intimate because that's a good word. But you know what I mean? Like that should be an event with you and your partner or or whoever. Like I guess whatever. But that should be like that's that's an intimate moment, not with a woman you've never met before. If she was like best friends with his sister and this was a real story, which we know is not because he's clearly a fraud. But let's say that like like he was out of town for whatever. Okay, I get that, but man, you tell your promotion, look, my girl's, t this is crazy. No, that, if the house, <laughs> I mean, I can't get pregnant, obviously, but if the house falling through hadn't done it and I were her, this would have been the end. But I got bad news for you folks. There are six hours and 28 minutes left of this story, so it is not the end. And I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. So my aunt was going to, had offered to take me, and then my friend who took me home from work. Texas one, to you stop it right now. Oh my God. So at that point, I have to tinkle so bad. Come on, let's get to the end of part six. Um, we get into an argument because he's Ooh. like, my sister is, you know, you, you about your family. So why can't she? No, that's not a spoiler. That's fine. As long as I don't know who it is. I had a feeling it was going to be like a random woman he didn't know because I did not. I, I don't consider it a spoiler because in my mind, I was like, there's no way he's got family here and he's running these cons on everybody. So no, you're good. You're good. I, I knew it was going to be the sister. Now, who it is, I don't want to know. And I was like, no, nah, because I don't know her. Period. Good. I don't know her. So, so my friend offers to take me to the hospital because I was all distressed that he's saying he has a business meeting and he can't take me. Yeah. So, I remember being on I-75. Oh, I hate I-75. We have that here, too. It goes through Atlanta. Oh, it's a disaster. The connector on the phone with her crying because I, I was so embarrassed that he wasn't going to be the one to take me and that I was needing to rely on someone else to take Joe Mama, we're almost done here. If you come back in like five, ten minutes, you could start the stream from scratch if you don't want to see the end. But we're literally about, ended about four minutes. The video will be over. Take me to the hospital in order to get a B and C done. And she was really great. She was like, Earl, this is why you have a village. Like, it's okay. Things happen. That's beautiful. This is I like that. This is why you have a village. I like that. And the world is crazy right now. I will take you. You're going to be okay. So he did not take me to the hospital um, for my DNC. 
my friend did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Um, so when they wheeled me into pre-op after I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. They're going to get me prepared to go back um, to the surgical ward or whatever. Okay. And the response I got was from his new executive assistant named Stop David. it. Stop it. Stop it right now. Now, when he told me he was up for the promotion... He- I can't believe that up until this point, this woman never got in her car and followed this man or put a GP... I'm not advocating for, you know, throwing an Apple... Uh, what do they call those? The Apple things that attract people? Uh, the Apple tag? Is it an, an iTag? An Apple tag? Whatever. I'm not telling people to go do that. However, I am shocked that at this point, when this man left for work in the morning, this woman wasn't like, I'm either going to follow his ass or drop an Apple tag in his briefcase. But it is what it is. He did tell me. An air tag. That- thank you. An air tag. I'm not saying you should do that, ladies and gents. That'd be cuckoo behavior. But I probably would have by this point. That part Same. of getting this new job would be that he would get an executive is it, uh, executive assistant. It's named too much. David. It's too much. And he did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform you <sighs> if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, pull me out of the meeting because, you know, she's, my fiance is having um, a procedure done and I'm picking her up. So it's important that you come get me if it's something serious. Okay. So I text him. David responds. He said, yeah, Mr. Blah Blah told David me that responds. you are having a procedure done. If you need me to get him, I can go get him. He's in a meeting. Just let me know what you need. Yeah, give her and some Life 360, find my friend, something. No, don't bother him. I'm just giving an update that they're about to take me back. And David responds and says, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. I follow my friends and find my friends. But let me tell you why. Some of them I follow. It's actually pretty morbid. But, you know, Hurricane, what was the big one? That we just narrowly dodged. Not last year. It was 2009, 2017. It wreaked havoc <clears throat> in uh, South Florida. Was it Ian? Whoever hurricane it was. Everybody was evacuating. I couldn't. Things were a li- little more difficult for my family. You know, whatever. It is what it is. So we hunkered down in my house. <laughs> and I had some friends who sent me friend my fr- find my friend requests. When they found out I was not leaving. And I was like, yeah, I'll accept them. I was like, why? You want to make sure I'm not partying? And they were like, well, no. <laughs> You never know, like, what if we have to find you or something? I was like, excuse me. <laughs> then I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So I accepted. And we still follow each other this day. So I have the procedure. I wake up and I am now in recovery. I should be in recovery 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. Okay. I wake up. First thing I ask, and I remember asking, is where is... So my so, man's the nurse who was so sweet you know she was like everything went well um you're doing great okay she said we spoke to your fiance pretty much you jess way. yes so i said okay you know okay i kind of dozed back out but i could still hear everything that was going on i just could not keep my eyes open to save my life Sad. so i hear her talk to the other nurse and that's when she said yeah um dr so-and-so called her fiance and his executive assistant picked up and please tell me this man was not on the down low. I'm putting two and two together. I don't tell me. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm hoping he's changing his voice or this is just his friend. But if I find out this man was on the down low, oh God, we still have six hours. We're going to have the best two weeks, folks. The executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting and that, um, you know, you could relate to him what you need to say. And if you mean down low is a term for, for you know, liking the same sex, like a, a man being with a man's, but they do it on the down low, you know, like so nobody sees it. And he'll, you know, keep it on the down low. Also, an R. Kelly, sorry, uh, song with the Isley Brothers. Uh, great song if you ignore the R. Kelly part. <laughs> tell Mr. He'll tell the fiance. And my doctor was like, hell no, <laughs> HIPAA. Um, I need to speak to him. Yes. So apparently, my fiance called the doctor back about 30 minutes later. Okay. And the doctor informed him she'll be ready to be discharged in about an hour. You know, you can make your way and come pick her up. He said he was on his way. He was on his way from Duluth to Atlanta, which is not, oh. not a huge distance. Yeah, anything through Atlanta is a huge distance, though. Going through Atlanta at any time of the day is hell on earth. But the time of day, one thing about Atlanta, there's always traffic. Oh, so, see? She already knew. I read her mind. Oh, it's the worst. The he worst. should have been there within the hour. I should have only been in recovery an hour and a half. Oh, God. If I find out this woman was sitting there sick. Oh. Let's, let's I really have to urinate. The next part. No! Oh, God. We're living out on a cliffhanger. I'm sorry, I have to I have to tinkle and I'm gonna stick to the title of the stream and I didn't want to go more than ninety minutes too long and 
I'm keeping my words because I want to, we're going to be streaming a lot more, so I don't want to tire myself out. This was a great, great cliffhanger. Do not tell me what happens next, but I'm going to get six fucking hours, that poor lady. That's my guess. All right. Let me run through super chats and memberships and stuff, and then I'm going to say my thank yous and stuff. Okay. Shadow hair. Uh, thanks for becoming a new member. I think I might have missed that. If I did, I'm sorry. I don't remember if I said it or not. Did I? I'm putting you on screen because I can't remember if I did. Thanks for becoming a new member. Shadow hair. There is a list. Donuts. Thanks for being a member for four months. That Amber Chick, uh, thanks for being a member for six months. Mr. Magoo, thanks again for the super sea hats. Uh, Castle Drolla, thanks for being a member for six months. And Stan Designs, thanks, uh, thanks for the super chat. The Milk Expiring, I remember saying thank you to you, so I'm so sorry. I think I missed the first person's shadow here, sorry. Uh, thanks, for being a member for, uh, thanks for becoming a member. And then Sandy S, thanks for being a member for six months okay this was awesome so thursday i'm going to set up a stream at some point tonight we're going to do parts seven through seven through twelve <laughs> Sorry, we're going to do a 7 through 12. Oh my goodness. Thanks, little Boots, for being for the super chat. You're being annoying, but we love you, Boots. Big Boots. So we'll see you Thursday for that, part 6 through 12. Uh, I thanked all the super chats I did in another movement. Thank you so much. Uh, moderators, thanks for moderating. Everyone else, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for not being too faced. Thanks for, thanks for standing for something. Fucking love you all. And I will see you guys on Thursday for stream 2. Who the fuck did I marry? Part 6 through 12. There's going to be no outro music because I'm having issues with my music and shit. But I'll figure that out and uh, by Thursday. And also the members list will be updated on Thursday. I will be displayed. I promise. And top tier members, I know I owe you two streams. You're going to get them both. Relax. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm just going to do a cute little wave and we're going to edit here. Oh, damn it, huge ass. I have to pee. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. No pee for you. I got to go. I'm ending now. Bye, guys.